mysterious structures located all over the world. It's as if all these ancient builders went to the same school. Magnificent monuments emitting powerful energy. When you go inside it, you have the feeling like you are in the hands of an extraordinary intelligence. Did ancient man build the pyramids as burial chambers? You know, if you want to build the tomb, fair enough. Why use two and a half million blocks of stones? Or did they serve another, much more profound purpose? You have to think that whoever is guiding such a precise network of pyramids must have been a very advanced culture, probably extraterrestrials. Millions of people around the world believe we have been visited in the past by extraterrestrial beings. What if it were true? Did ancient aliens really help to shape our history? And if so, might there be an extraterrestrial connection behind the secrets of the pyramids? Gebel Barkal, Northern Sudan. Tamil Nadu, Western India. The Temple of Ur, Southeast Iraq. From the ziggurats of ancient Babylon to the temples of the Kush Kingdom, pyramids dating as far back as 3000 BC exist throughout the world. Pyramids come in many different shapes and sizes. In Mexico, for instance, you get circular pyramids and step pyramids. And even in uh, Uxmal, in the Yucatan Peninsula, the corners of it are curved. In India, the pyramids are so very, very high, straight up. The same thing happened with the pyramid in Central America. They are like this, while the pyramid in Egypt have this shape. They are different. A pyramid is pretty straightforward. Typically, you have a square base, and you have four sides that are each a triangle and meet at the top. If you want to make anything that's going to be tall, the first thing you would always build would be some type of pyramid, because it's the most stable structure you can imagine making. We have 250 pyramids in central Chinese province of Shanxi. We have dozens of pyramids in the middle of Indian Ocean, on the island of Mauritius, Canary Islands, Northern Sudan, Egypt, of course, 155 of them, but also 300 pyramids in Peru, pyramids in Bolivia, and of course, over 10,000 pyramids in Central America. So they are worldwide phenomena. How is it possible that civilizations spread out over five continents all built similar pyramidal structures. Ancient astronaut theorists believe most pyramids were constructed by builders who possessed the same advanced knowledge of mathematics, astronomy, and the Earth's geophysical properties. In Montevecchia, Milan, Italy, the pyramids at that location seem to show a very clear resemblance to the pyramids at the Giza Plateau. But without any type of trans-oceanic contact, how is it possible that all these ancient cultures had a similar building style? The Kandi Suku Temple in Indonesia has several identical design elements as the pyramids at Chichen Itza. Another Hindu temple in Cambodia mysteriously resembles a Maya temple at Tikal. A possible explanation for all of this is that all of these cultures learned how to build these pyramids from the same teachers. It seems to be way back in prehistory, this whole thing where everyone was building pyramids. And it seems like it came from a much earlier culture. 
and it resonated all around the world. Well, that really is one of the big mysteries of the pyramids themselves, is that they seem to be everywhere. And they seem to have similar design, they have similar geometry, they even have the same measurement systems often. So it really does seem like the same group of people or beings were building these pyramids. We see a lot of similarities in terms of composition and cultures far back in time between Peru and Egypt and the Olmecs of southern Mexico. It is quite possible that the ancient Egyptians and the ancient Peruvians were indeed connected, that they actually traveled back and forth, visiting each other and influencing each other's cultures. The Giza Plateau, Egypt. Here, in the desert just outside Cairo, stands the Great Pyramid of Khufu. 4,500 years ago, it was the tallest and most impressive man-made structure on Earth. But exactly how and why the pyramid was constructed remains a mystery. The Great Pyramid it is the most wondrous place on Earth. And when you're standing in front of it, you are confronted with the greatest mystery of all time. Who built this place? How could it have been constructed? Why is it still standing? And then when you go inside it, you have the feeling like you are in the hands of an extraordinary intelligence. We've got a, a structure that's 480 feet high. It's, uh, it covers 13 acres, the two and a half million blocks of stone. The heaviest stones weigh 70 tons. They quarried thousands of tons of granite 500 miles away. It's an amazing structure. To me, the most intriguing thing is the scale of the project. You know, if you want to build the tomb, fair enough, but why go 146 meters high? Why use two and a half million blocks of stones with a mass of six million tons? Mainstream archaeologists theorize that the Great Pyramid was built sometime around 2500 BC as the burial tomb of the Pharaoh Khufu. But this claim has yet to be proven, and the debate among various researchers over for who or for what purpose the structure was built continues. We're told that the Great Pyramid was a tomb for the Pharaoh but there's never been a body found inside the Great Pyramid. We have found pyramids in the 1950s by respected Egyptologists, whereby the tomb was sealed, whereby the sarcophagus was intact, and inside there was no body, there was no corpse, there wasn't even a coffin. And so this notion that we really think that grave robbers somehow were responsible for everything can no longer be maintained. There has to be a reason for them to be there, and they are a tremendous expenditure of resources, and if not for a revered leader, they had to have had some benefit for the civilization that built them. So it's a whole controversy. Nobody knows why our ancestors constructed pyramids. But if the pyramids at Giza were not intended to house the remains of dead pharaohs, then why were these towering monuments built? Could there be a connection between the Pyramid of Khufu and other pyramids around the world, one that has been lost to time? Or is it possible that the builders of these engineering marvels had an otherworldly inspiration, as ancient astronaut theorists suggest? Both the Mayans and the Egyptians have legends that the gods came down and gave them instructions to build pyramids. Uh, for instance, with the Egyptians, the famous god Thoth is known as the architect of the universe. And it was he who allegedly designed the entire pyramid complex at Giza. Imhotep, the person who was responsible for the first pyramid, actually said that he received this information from the gods. 
not so much that God appeared to him and told him, but that he was able to access this information from a different realm. And from there began the pyramid building process. The fact that different cultures throughout this planet would have similar structures, I think, is mind-boggling. What made mankind decide, let's do these pyramid-shaped objects? Unless they were told, unless they were given blueprints, uh, the structures are just unbelievably perfect. You have to come up with a conclusion that, you know, it's very possible that extraterrestrials saw this civilization, gave them knowledge, and took off. Might the thousands of pyramids found throughout the world have a common extraterrestrial connection, as ancient astronaut theorists contend? Perhaps more proof can be found by looking at pyramids not from the ground, but from above. Egypt. 1940. While flying above the Giza Plateau, a British Air Force pilot photographs one of the most amazing features of the Great Pyramid. The structure actually has eight sides instead of four. This baffling phenomenon is only detectable from the air at dawn and sunset on the spring and autumn equinoxes, when the sun casts shadows on the pyramid that reveal the eight-sided, slightly concaved construction. This is a light show whereby the ancestors who built this knew that something visually spectacular would be seen on these important calendar days. We realized that whoever built this was aware of the solar cycle. And we also know that the person who built it had extraordinary understanding of mathematics. All of these things make it clear that of all pyramids, the Great Pyramid really is in a league of its own. Why is the Great Pyramid's true shape only visible from above at the equinox? And how did ancient man create such an intricate design that is exposed just twice a year and can only be seen from the sky. Ancient astronaut theorists believe clues can be found by examining the unique geographical and architectural characteristics of the towering structure. According to scholars, the Great Pyramid was built on what is considered to be the center of all the land masses of Earth. The massive structure is almost perfectly aligned to magnetic north. Inside the pyramid, the designers added small shafts aligned towards two specific constellations, Orion and Sirius. The four shafts are not only aligned perfectly on a north-south axis, but one shaft also points directly toward Orion's belt. Mainstream scientists believe shafts like these were simply used as ventilation during construction. But might there be another reason why they align with the stars? They used to call it an air shaft of the Great Pyramid. It's now known to be a star shaft. It's known to have been oriented to the passage of Orion's belt. And uh, it's thought to have represented the release of the soul back to its origin. There is much to suggest that this correlation is not a coincidence. We know that the ancient Egyptian pyramid builders believed that the king was going to become a star in Orion. The most extraordinary thing, I think, of our ancient civilizations is this. We have two beautiful pyramid complexes, one in Teotihuacan, one at Giza. Teotihuacan is created according to a specific layout. Within its design, we have a representation of our solar system. But we also know that, for example, the Temple of the Sun, the Temple of the Moon, i.e. two pyramids, and the Temple of Quetzalcoatl are in the same layout as Orion's belt. 
which the three pyramids of the Giza Plateau have been laid out into as well. So when we look at these buildings, we find they are mapped according to the same principle and incorporating the same information. The whole concept that the three pyramids at Giza are in a special alignment of Orion's belt is very interesting. The Mayans constructed hundreds of thousands of pyramids throughout Central America. Many of these pyramids may be designed to reflect certain constellations in the sky, like the Orion constellations or others. The old saying of, as above, so below. But why would the pyramid builders design their pyramids to reflect star constellations? Might the reason for specific placement of the pyramids on Earth be something that only the ancients understood? Pyramids in general tend to be very large in scale and can only be truly seen from above. So it's quite possible that the earliest pyramids were made as beacons, as a way for those not of this world to connect with those of this world. Maybe they were moving around the Earth and using these places, not just as sacred places, but in order to know where they were. Well, these pyramids are like geodetic markers, marking power spots around the planet. They really can be seen from the air. They're almost designed uh, from above. I believe that there's a deep mystery with them, and we really have to look at it from a different perspective to try and find the answer to that mystery. Is it possible the thousands of pyramids scattered across the globe were once part of a cohesive network? One that could only be understood from the sky. And who or what could have coordinated such a precise design? Magalang, Indonesia. The Borobudur Temple on the island of Java is the world's largest Buddhist monument. Built during the 8th and 9th centuries AD, this religious structure, with its wide base and tiered mound, is another example of a pyramid, consisting of six rectangular terraces topped by three concentric circular terraces. This intricate pyramid design has intrigued scholars, especially when viewed from the air. Borobudur is definitely not an obvious pyramid, but it is. It is a stepped pyramid on top of which have been built structures. The Borobudur temple is known as a shrine, but also a place of pilgrimage, where people start at the base and work their way up to the top, which they theorize is like reaching nirvana. Borobudur, Indonesia is one of the most amazing places in the world. Number one, it's incredibly beautiful. But number two, the message it conveys is absolutely mind-boggling. Because what we have there is a temple mound, a temple mound to the stars. From overhead, the temple takes the form of a giant Buddhist mandala a unique circular diagram representing both the cosmos and a spiritual place for prayer and meditation. The design indicates that this pyramid was once a place where man connected with the gods. Researchers question why and how the builders would create such an intricate religious symbol that can only be viewed from the air. But according to ancient astronaut theorists, the answer can be found on top of the pyramid, where there are 72 bell-shaped structures known as stupas, each housing a seated statue of Buddha. They are considered to be world eggs or wombs of transformation. It's fascinating because in India, the word for stupa is the word sakara, which means tower. Sakara is very much like the Egyptian word sakara, 
which is a place, the place of the step pyramid or the stairway to heaven. And it makes me wonder if the ancient Egyptians and the ancient Indians were telling us the same thing about the stupas, that these are in fact wombs of transformation, ladders or cosmic stairways into the heavens. The journey didn't happen in their heads. It wasn't something ethereal. It wasn't something spiritual. It happened. Extraterrestrial contact took place in Indonesia thousands of years ago. Were these stupas really built as a representation of spiritual enlightenment, as mainstream archaeologists believe? Or might they have been constructed to serve another, even more profound purpose? Could it be possible that the ancient inhabitants of Indonesia actually witnessed an extraterrestrial event? Ancient astronaut theorists believe proof may be found in the archaeological ruins of ancient pyramids, proof that is hidden in plain sight. Shanxi Province, China, 1947. While flying 40 miles southwest of Xi'an, Colonel Maurice Shehan discovered a giant mysterious mound isolated in the Qinshuan Plains. Within days, Shehan reports his account to the New York Times, describing what he believed was a giant pyramid in China that seemed to dwarf the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Since the story broke, 37 more pyramid-shaped mounds have been identified in China, including the mausoleum of the first Qin Emperor, where thousands of terracotta warrior statues were buried in the third century BC. But while mainstream scientists contend the mounds are simply tombs of the early emperors of China, some researchers believe they are in fact pyramids that have been covered up by the Chinese government. We have pictures of these and it's pretty convincing that they're pyramid structures. It's in the forbidden zone of China, so unfortunately, we can't go in there. But that raises the question, what is going on? The pyramids in China were a mystery for the outside world for the longest time. We had some photos during the 1940s and 1950s, and then during the 1970s and 1980s. The Chinese government ordered plants to be planted on top of those pyramids. They wanted to show them as the natural hills to the outside world. It's interesting to note that the pyramidal structures in China were purposely covered over with plants and vegetation by the government to just look like normal rolling hills. Maybe because of the significance of the artifacts and presence of what took place in the past at these structures, they don't want tourists or anyone to disrupt these sacred sites. Why is the Chinese government attempting to hide these giant structures? Is it really to protect the sacred tombs of China's ancient emperors? Or might the government be attempting to hide another, even more, profound secret. Now, an interesting correlation with this is that ancient Chinese emperors claim contact with extraterrestrials in their writing. And they claim people from the sky came down and helped them with information. And therefore, there could be a historical record that could possibly link these pyramids with visitors from another planet. Is it possible, as ancient astronaut theorists believe, that the Chinese pyramids, like others found all over the world, have an extraterrestrial connection? And could this explain why the Chinese government would want to conceal them? If so, might there be more hidden and otherwise undiscovered pyramids in other countries? Countries that want to ensure that the truth of their extraterrestrial origin will never be known.
Visoko, Bosnia. Since 2005, these triangular-shaped hills, located 20 miles northwest of the capital city of Sarajevo, have been the subject of a controversial debate between mainstream scientists and a handful of international researchers led by Bosnian historian and archaeologist Dr. Sam Osmanagic. According to Osmanagic, the hills are in fact engineered pyramids, including two, the Pyramid of the Sun and the Pyramid of the Moon, that are both taller than any in Egypt. It looked like a hill, but you could see four triangular faces, obvious corners, and when I took compass, compass shows me that those sides match with the cardinal points, east, west, north, and south. The orientation of the sides of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun is the most precise on the planet. There are people who look at the hills of Visoko, in Bosnia, they see a pyramid that looks like a hill. Other people see a hill that looks like a pyramid. When I went there, I was looking for evidence of cut stones. There seemed to be evidence of the activities of man that go back much earlier than previously believed. Osmanagic's theory suggests the pyramids were built by the Illyrian people who inhabited the Balkan Peninsula as far back as the 12th century BC. Little is known about the prehistoric Illyrians, but Osmanagic thinks they were more sophisticated than many experts have suggested. The pyramids were built by the civilizations far more advanced than we are today. When we find the binding material on the blocks of the Bosnian pyramids, we got the age of 12,350 years, meaning that these are the oldest pyramids on the planet. And they require that our history books be changed. Mainstream geologists insist the mountains are simply geological formations made up of natural rock and soil, and that Osmanagic's pyramid theory lacks credibility. But Osmanagic claims to have discovered evidence of advanced human construction, including a paved entrance plateau, an extensive underground network of tunnels and chambers, and concrete building blocks, each weighing up to 80,000 pounds. On the Sun Pyramid, the whole pyramid is covered by approximately 18 million tons of concrete. We have analyzed them in six institutes for materials. The answer is always the same. This is artificial concrete, which is three times of better quality than what we have in 21st century. Where did they find the material to build such a huge pyramid? What we're beginning to realize about the Bosnian pyramid site is not just that we are dealing with one of the most gigantic pyramid complexes in the world, also one of the oldest ones, but also one whereby the approach which is being taken there is probably going to tell us an awful lot of new material, not just about the Bosnian pyramids as such, but about pyramids worldwide. Despite Osmanagic's findings, mainstream scientists continue to deny the existence of the Bosnian pyramids. But why? Is there something hidden in these hillsides that the government once kept secret, just like the pyramids of China? We seem to have been conditioned from childhood from texts such as the Quran and the Bible that we are limited in terms of how long we have existed as a civilized people. But the oral traditions of many cultures state clearly that our humanity goes back farther back in time than what Western science believes. Conventional science is almost like a closed system. They have a very structured belief system 
and anything which doesn't fit within their belief system is simply rejected or hidden from us. This is what is called forbidden archaeology. We can see them, we can explore them, and the stuff that has already been explored leads to the idea that this place has been, in fact, been built artificially. So what's with all the secrecy about the Bosnian pyramids? Well, if the Bosnian pyramids were, in fact, man-made, then that turns the entire history of Bosnia upside down. Because who were the builders? Who were the teachers of the builders? And so a whole new line of questioning opens up. Could these so-called natural formations found in China and Bosnia actually be man-made pyramids? And if so, might the discovery of who designed these pyramids reveal information as to why they were built? Ancient astronaut theorists believe the answer can be found in the modern pyramids of Russia. Moscow, Russia. Each year, hundreds of thousands of visitors travel to a location 25 miles northwest of the Russian capital, where a massive pyramid made of fiberglass is said to amplify and focus healing energies from the Earth. The 144-foot-tall, 55-ton structure is the largest of 17 pyramids located across Russia and was financed and built by Russian scientist and defense contractor Alexander Gullad. Many people do not realize that there are large modern pyramids in Russia and in Ukraine. And this was because around 1989, Alexander Golod from Moscow believed that pyramids produce large energy fields that could affect both biological and non-biological materials. In the past 10 years, the Russian scientists have looked deeply into the question of pyramid energies. And they have shown that by placing items within a pyramid that it promotes growth, it promotes health, it promotes longevity. They discovered, for example, that if you take antibiotics and you treat them in the pyramid for a period of uh, one moon cycle or about 28 days, that the uh, power of the antibiotic was multiplied tens of thousands of times. This energy field has been documented to exist. The Russian Air Force noticed a large energy field that they picked up on their radar a mile high going above Golod's large pyramid in Moscow. And therefore, I believe all these effects were caused by these energy fields. Is it possible that the energy effect of Gullet's pyramid is a phenomenon that scientists are only now just beginning to understand? Or could ancient civilizations around the world have been aware of this pyramid power thousands, if not tens of thousands of years ago? The placement of the pyramids are very interesting because they seem to be placed where the energy is. And I think the ancients understood this very carefully, but they were also mapping the planet at the same time. So they were like multi-purpose structures. And they were left there for future generations to work with. And they encode very high knowledge within the mathematics and the geometry. And we're just starting to understand the nature of it now. If you have certain underground energies, once you place the pyramid on top of it, then the pyramid can harness, can use, can multiply those energy effects 10 or 50 times. And then you have a perfect energy machine. The word pyramid comes from the ancient Greek, meaning fire in the center. The ancient Greeks thought that the geometric shape of pyramids focused cosmic energy, and that pyramids all over the world 
were some kind of energy collectors. Could ancient civilizations have built pyramids not just to represent a symbolic cosmic connection, but to mark a place of actual extraterrestrial contact, as many ancient astronaut theorists believe? Some researchers suggest evidence can be found in Central America, where the Mayans built more pyramid temples than any other civilization in antiquity. In terms of pyramid builders, it's safe to say that the Maya created more pyramids than every other culture in the world combined. But the functions of buildings in classic Maya society is really one of the weakest points that archaeology has. We don't have a good idea about what pyramids were used for. In different Maya cities, we have many pyramids. The biggest Maya city was Tikal. Tikal is in today's Guatemala, and there were around 80 pyramids. And on top of these towers, we had a little temple where the god was expected to come. All of these pyramids, even though they have a temple on top, also had a chamber inside. And it is known that certain rituals were performed inside these chambers. These chambers were also identified as places of transformation, where people had to go to and came out differently. Differently because they had been contacted by or had contacted the gods. The Maya, as many other ancient cultures, viewed planets in the moon and the sun as gods. And I think that was the motivation for the Maya to collect incredible bodies of data about planets to try to see what are the gods' patterns, and how can we emulate and honor them? In many of the religious belief systems, the function of the pyramid was to connect that above with that which is below. Now that's symbolic. It could mean simply that people were calling to the gods from on top of these pyramids, or it could go much deeper than that. It could be an actual connection between human beings and beings from other planets. Is it possible that the Mayans and other ancient cultures were given information about the energy producing properties of pyramids from extraterrestrial beings? And if so, what could be the true function of these structures? Ancient astronaut theorists believe the Great Pyramid of Giza may hold the ultimate proof that the pyramids could generate enough energy to reach not just across the planet, but across the universe. Giza, Egypt. In 1977, and then again in 1987, electronics engineer and inventor Joe Parr conducted experiments on the top of the Great Pyramid. Using equipment of his own design, Parr measured the pyramid's electrical, magnetic, and radioactive properties. Joe Parr, who was my very close friend and research colleague, discovered what I believe is the most incredible discovery about the Great Pyramid and pyramids in general. Joe believed that the pyramids had an energy field around them. All pyramids had it. The problem is the pyramid energy field was usually not strong enough. So he developed in his laboratory a method for generating this pyramid energy. So then he could actually do scientific studies on it. Over the last few decades, people have been experimenting with pyramids. What has come to the forefront of this is the fact that pyramids are an enigma. They really have powers which are very hard to explain. And so people like Joe Parr have been looking into this. When somebody goes to the top of the Great Pyramid and experiences this weird electromagnetic vibration, this is not just a coincidence, but this has to do with the fact that the Great Pyramid is causing this. Joe Parr found out that if he put a model pyramid 
and spun it in a centrifuge through an alternating magnetic current. An energy field, or he calls it an orb or bubble, would form around the model pyramid. Joe found that this bubble or energy orb would block all known types of electromagnetic radiation, even gamma rays. Now, this was interesting. We don't know of any types of energy forces that could do this. This is the most incredible thing about Joe Parr's discovery. In later laboratory experiments, Parr claimed to have discovered yet another strange physical phenomenon. The model pyramid became weightless in the energy field and began to move in a specific direction. And he calculated the direction of this energy field where the pyramid would shoot out from. And guess what? It aligns exactly where we would see the constellation Orion. So Joe speculated that it went into hyperspace. This is speculation, but it makes a lot of sense. In string theory and physics, it postulates the existence of six additional spatial dimensions. So how do we know the way this energy fields were set up? It allows this pyramid to go into another dimension and travel. Joe never proved this, but before he died, he believed that the pyramid act as a time machine, if you could unlock its key. I believe that, that it's a gateway or a portal into multiple dimensions that would uh, enable or transmission of people, objects, or consciousness from uh, other dimensions into our dimension. Is it possible, like Joe Parr believed, that the Great Pyramid could facilitate travel through interdimensional space? And if so, were there other pyramids with the same capabilities? Might the Earth's pyramids be connected, not simply by shape, but by purpose, perhaps as part of some otherworldly plan? The ancient people were all building these same pyramids because it was a way for them to, to tap in to the natural energy of the Earth. And you have to think that whoever is guiding such a precise network of pyramids must have been a very advanced culture, probably extraterrestrials. In all of this, I have one single question. Where are the blueprints? If all of this was so incredibly important, then wouldn't you think that we would have at least one record of some type of a blueprint? And the reality is, there is not a single piece. Why? Could it be because the blueprints have disappeared? Pyramids interconnected by design, transforming the Earth's electromagnetic power and serving as gateways for otherworldly travelers. Is it really possible that the ancient pyramids are part of an advanced, perhaps alien technology, one which we have not yet discovered? If so, what will happen when their secrets are unlocked? Is mankind finally ready for the truth? <laughs>